Good morning. We are glad that you are here in the house of the Lord one more time. This is Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, located in Kansas City, Missouri on 24th and Florida. And we are glad that you're here, for this is truly a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And where you're at, whether you're in your car, whether you're at home, wherever you might be, give God a hand clap of praise for another day journey. Amen and amen. As we go through this worship celebration, we pray that all of you will be blessed by the word that will come, by the songs that will be sung, and by the prayers that will be lifted up and the scriptures read, that God will touch your heart and your spirit, and that you will be able to run on to see what the end is going to be. God bless you. Pray for us as we pray for you as we come to you next with our song from our worship and praise team. We'll have a prayer, we'll have scripture, another song by our praise team, and then we'll be blessed by the word that will be preached today by Reverend Dr. Robin Wilson, a member of the Bethel family, and you will be blessed by the word that God has given to her on this another day that he has made. Oh, come and worship with us and praise the name of God together. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Thank God for that wonderful song. For he's truly worthy to be praised. Now we ask that wherever you are, that you will bow your heads, close your eyes, and let all of the things that might be separating you from receiving what God has for you, put it out of your mind right now. Let us have a little quiet time where we can call upon the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God of grace and God of mercy, we call upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, your Son. Yes. The author and the finisher of our faith, our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end. We come, Heavenly Father, at a time that we are calling on you because you are worthy of all praise. You have been better to us than we could have ever been to ourselves. You watched over us and protected us from dangers seen and unseen. You provided for us when we were unable to provide for ourselves. You let no weapon formed against us prosper. And God, we take now this opportunity to say thank you one more time. For Father God, we know that there are many things that are going on in this world that is causing trials and tribulations and chaos. But Father God, we know that you are not a God of confusion, but a God of peace. And we not only, Heavenly Father, pray for our churches and all of those that are standing in the need, but we pray for our nation. We pray, God, that after all that has been said and done, that you will continue, O oh God, to bring us together. That we, O oh God, may serve you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, if we ever needed you, we need you right now. For there are still those, O oh Father, that are trying to dismantle all things that should be working for the good of your people. But Father God, we realize that what man meant for evil, God meant for the good. And God, we're not gloating now about anything that has transpired. But what we're acknowledging, Father God, is that if we just wait on you, that all things work together for good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose. For Father God, you know what we need. And if we just have faith to believe it and trust in you, then all things will work according to your will and your way. Now, Father God, as you prepare for the word that you have given to your servant, let us, Heavenly Father, be in a receptive mode that the words that come from her heart and her mouth and her spirit will touch us, O oh God, in such a way that we'll turn from the wicked ways of this old world and give our lives in service to you. Bless her, Lord. Take her down in the deep treasures of your love. Crown her with wisdom and with knowledge. And let her speak with power and with authority. And Father God, we promise, yes, we promise, that before this day is done, that we will look up towards heaven one more time and say thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Now, Father God, we pray for those that are sick. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, that are shut in and shut out. We pray for those, oh God, that are walking the streets, not knowing you in the pardon of their sins. We pray for the children. We pray for the adults. We pray for those, oh God, that are having difficulties in their lives, whatever it may be, because we serve a God 
that promise never to leave us nor forsake us, that will be there for us even in times like these. God, bring a peace that will surpass all understanding. And we promise to give you the glory. In your precious name we pray. And the people of God said together, Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 16 through the end of the chapter. Let us start with verse number 16, the Great Commission, verses 16 through the end of the chapter. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. To God be the glory. The word of God for the people of God. All praises be unto God. We are again glad that you are here with us on this another day that the Lord has made. And the only announcement that I would like to say is just to thank all of you for your prayers, your continued support, and your dedication to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if God has moved upon your heart to bless us financially, there are many different ways that you can give to the Bethel family. And if you go to our website, which you can find on your computers, laptops, or your phones. It will direct you and show you how easy it is to give. Secure give, PayPal, any way that you would like to give. You can even drop it by the church in the mailbox if you so desire. But we're praying that you will continue to support your church, not only spiritually, but financially as well. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen and amen. And now let us be blessed one more time before the messenger for this morning comes, Reverend Dr. Robin Wilson, will come and preach to us after the next selection from this great worship and praise team. Hear ye her and pray for her. Amen.
just to magnify, to glorify, and praise the Lord. Join me now just for a moment of prayer. Spirit of the living God, mm -hmm. fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, mm. fall fresh on me. Oh, yes. We invite your Holy Spirit into this sanctuary, into the car, into our living rooms. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us is our prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Pastor Smith for reading today's scripture. And I'm going to just reread two of the verses. So if you would join me back in this very familiar passage, mm -hmm. Matthew, the 28th chapter, and I'm just going to read for us verses 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. And I ask that you follow along as I read from the contemporary English version. Mm -hmm. Go to the people of all nations mm -hmm. and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm and teach them to do everything I have told you. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Yes. What a week, y'all. <laughs> really, we can just say, what a year. Mm. When Pastor Smith voluntold, asked, told me to deliver <laughs> this week's sermon, <laughs> I didn't give any thought to this being the Sunday after. Mm. You know, the Sunday after the election. Yes. And I thought my pastor was my friend until I really started thinking well, about well, 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 the well. fact that this was the Sunday after. Mm. And the Sunday after lawsuits had been filed. Yes. The Sunday after inaccurate claims of fraud had been made. The, well, well, the Sunday well, well. after the never-ending news cycle that seemed to be the same report over and over again. The Sunday after the Saturday, though, when it was said that it is done. My, my, my. And it didn't hit me until last Sunday mm -hmm. that I would be preaching the Sunday after. Mm -hmm. So once reality set in, if, if I can be honest, because we family, mm -hmm. I then debated on whether I should begin seeking God then mm. about what the word was for today mm. well, well. or just wait until Wednesday to start my sermon. You know, after the results yeah, yeah. may have been in. <laughs> but as I listened to pastor's sermon last week, which was entitled, Don't Fret, It's Not Over Yet, while I was on my Sunday morning walk, see, I took the word to the streets and I worshiped while I walked. All right, all right. The answer became clear. In that message, Pastor Smith reminded us not to fret because God can repair broken systems. He reminded us not to fret because God knows how to restore. And as I walked and I worshiped, God spoke to me loud and clear. And the Lord said, Robin, because we on first name basis like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. contrary to what your weary soul thinks, mm. it does not actually matter who lives in the White House for the next four years. Oh, your right. response, the response of my children should still be the same. Mm -hmm. It is time for my people to get to work. All right. My brothers and sisters, that's our sermon title for today. It is time to work. Mm -hmm. The scripture for today is one we all know well, and it's usually referred to as the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. In the contemporary English version of the Bible, the heading that precedes this portion of scripture is what Jesus' followers must do. Uh -huh. As followers of Jesus, there are some things that we must do. Yeah. The commission has not been changed. It is time to work. 
Let's take a moment and go back in time and look what happens before Jesus gives this directive to the disciples. At the beginning of the 28th chapter of Matthew, the story of the resurrection is presented. On the first day of the week, the angel of the Lord appears to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary as they made their way to the tomb and declared to them that the crucified Jesus was not there. Mm -hmm. The angel declared that he had risen just like he said uh -oh. he would. All right. Those of you may remember that I preached a sermon a while back entitled, He Kept His Word. Let me pause right there because somebody needs to be reminded that even in the midst of chaos, God keeps his word. Yeah. He is a promise keeper and we can shout on just that. Don't let the current events of today make you lose sight that Jesus is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he is the same forevermore. Let me get back to our text. The angel shows the women the empty tomb, and then he directs them to go tell, catch that, go tell, the disciples that Jesus has indeed risen and will meet them in Galilee. And as the women ran on joyfully, Jesus meets them along the path. Y'all, you don't have to worry. Wherever you are today, wherever he has stationed you on the path, he is right there all the way with you. Oh, yes, he is. So we fast forward then yeah. to the 16th verse where we see the 11 disciples in Galilee where Jesus told them to meet him. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Let's sit with that for just a moment. Don't be too hard on those who since Tuesday to today displayed some doubt, even if that somebody happens to be you. Mm -hmm. The disciples were fresh off the heels of an extremely traumatic experience, the crucifixion. They had witnessed what they thought was death getting the victory. Mm -hmm. They witnessed what they thought might have been the end, well. the end of hope, the end of change, the end of an era. Wow. Sound familiar to anybody? Mm -hmm. Sound like what the last four years have felt like for people of color and for wow. women and for other marginalized people in this country? Wow. While things were far from perfect for us prior to 2016, yeah. mm -hmm. there was still hope. Yes. And just when we thought we had made some progress in this company, country, we thought the election of a black man to the highest office in the land, not once but twice, gave us hope that maybe, just maybe, we had made some ideological progress in this country. But the repeated trauma, the microaggressions, the macroaggressions of the last four years served as a reminder on repeat that the battles our ancestors fought ain't yet been won. The cover may have been fully lifted on who really? America has always been and still is. Yeah. So yes, there are some today, well maybe yesterday, that found it easier to doubt than to worship. But there is good news, and I promise you it's not the good news of what you heard on Saturday afternoon. The good news is that Jesus commissioned us to get to work. All right. Can we be honest for a moment? Yeah. We got complacent, y'all. Yes, we did. We became okay with good enough. Yeah, yeah. And as I told the ladies last week during our sister sister Bible study, that is a shameless plug. If you're not joining us, you should. We managed to get good at multitasking God. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like the folk you see out to dinner together, but instead of talking to each other, they all scrolling through their phones. But we called it multitasking. We we now in this world of Zoom can be in multiple meetings at multiple in the same time. And we think we're really doing something, but we're really not paying attention to what we should be paying right. attention to. All right. That's us, y'all. Mm -hmm. We're in the room with God, but our minds are elsewhere. Our attention has been divided. However, until we intentionally discipline ourselves to be still and listen, we will miss most of what God is trying to tell us even in this moment. I invite us to consider something radical this morning. 
maybe just maybe part of the plan for this whole COVID thing, plus the murder of George Floyd, plus the murder of Breonna Taylor, was to get us still enough so that we didn't miss what he's trying to say to us in this moment. My brothers and sisters, it is time to work. Contrary to what folk may try to convince you, the end of this election cycle is not the end of racism. The end of this election cycle will not be the end of sexism. The end of this election cycle will not be the end of classism. The end of this election cycle will not be the end of poverty. It will not be the end of violence. It will not be the end of greed. It will not be the end of poor education. Nor is this the end of sin in this world. And as a result, Jesus is meeting us here in this moment. At this mountaintop just like he did with the disciples to commission us. Mm -hmm. In case you are sitting wondering what do you do now that a winner has been declared, Mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is it's what you should have been doing before a winner was declared. It's what you should do three weeks from now. It's what you should do from six months from now. It is all the same. Go to the people of all the nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to do everything I have told you. And I will be with you always, Always. even until the end. He is inviting you. Yes, you. Yes, me. He's calling you. Yes, you. Yes, me. He is commissioning you. Yes, you. Yes, me. My brothers and my sisters, there is a part in the Great Commission that only you can fulfill. He created you uniquely and specifically for a task that he is calling you to do. Yes. Good word. Yes. Yes. In the 18th verse of this chapter, Jesus came to them and said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Mm -hmm. Today, November 8th, 2020, the scope of Christ's authority is exactly the same. He is in control of the entire universe. It doesn't matter what the Electoral College says. It doesn't matter what the popular vote says. It doesn't matter what the folk overseas says. This is all his kingdom, and he is giving us his authority to go and get to work. These last words of Jesus to his disciples could have been said, he could have said anything else to them in the moment. Yet he stood to remind them and us that surely nothing is outside the power of him who had died and had conquered death. The battle is already won and he is still in control. Death could not defeat him, neither will COVID, neither will corrupt corrupt political people. Jesus is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. That is your shout right there. This is all his anyway. Yeah, yeah. So now that we've determined who has authority, Uh it's time to work. What's the work? I'm so glad you asked that. It's time to go. Yes, even in COVID-19, we have to go. Now going, it may look different. Going may involve you making a phone call. Going may look like you sending an email. Going may look like a masked up conversation six feet apart for less than 10 minutes or whatever it is the CDC says. But the truth of the matter is, I don't know about you, but give me 60 seconds and I can tell you all you need about the man that I met that changed my entire life. The method may look different, my brothers and sisters, but the mission is the same. I know it's about to get colder and darker and that we may be tempted to hibernate, but that's not what those who have been created and called by Emmanuel, God who is with us, will do. If this election cycle has not energized you, I don't know what will. I read something the other day that suggested that in reality, number 45 was not the problem. He was a symptom of the problem. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, that part of the iceberg that you see, but he's pointed out that there's so much more underneath. 
which means the children of God have work to do. Yeah. Yeah. The next thing besides going, it's time to make disciples. Baptize, teach, win souls for Christ. The commission does not say make more Democrats or make more Republicans. It says to make disciples. When you look up the word disciple in the dictionary, which you all know I like to give definitions, it's the teacher in me. Webster defines disciple as one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. We are disciples. We've accepted and we are now charged with assisting in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is commissioning us to assist with the spreading of the good news. Just like y'all flooded y'all timelines on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram when a winner was declared, when is the last time you flooded your lifetime, your timeline just declaring that Jesus is good? We've got to tell folks that Jesus is a way maker. We've got to tell folks that Jesus is a mind regulator. We've got to tell folks that Jesus is a healer, that Jesus is a provider, that Jesus is, you fill in the blank, because I know you got your long list of things he's done for you as well. Come on, yeah. And we have work to do. Work to do. Don't forget, there are a whole lot of folk who profess Christ who stood with 45. And think about what those who don't know must now think about what it means to be a Christian. Mm. My brothers and sisters, it's time to work. So we have to go. We have to make disciples. We have to teach. And with the same conviction that we held over the last months, telling people to get out and vote, We need to stand and declare, now that you voted, it's time for you to get saved. It's time for you to get to know Jesus. It's time for you to understand how you got over it. It was not some politician. It was all about a God who was alive and well and ready to save your soul. Hallelujah. Come on. And if you're like me, you're wondering, how can I, just one person, do this? Can I really make a difference? Well, the really good news is found in what Jesus said to the disciples right at the end of the 20th verse. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Hold your your shout for a second or two. I promise we're almost done. Jesus promised them and us presence. Think about it. It must have been a staggering thing for the disciples to be sent forth to the conquest of the world. That's a heavy load to think about. But no sooner than Jesus commands them to go ye therefore, teaching, baptizing, and spreading the good news, he gave them a promise. They were sent out as we are on the greatest task in history, but with the greatest presence in the world. So Pastor Smith, don't worry. This load is not yours to carry. He is with you. Steward Board, this load is not yours to carry. He is with you. Trustee Board, he is carrying the load with you. You leaders, it's not your load. It's his to carry. Judge Caps, it's not your load. It's his to carry. Mamas, daddies, grandmamas, aunties, uncles, granddaddies, the load My fellow disciples, it is time to get to work. As we prepare to get to work, I just want us to remember as written in John 15, verse 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, You're like that branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This 
is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. All we have to do, my brothers and sisters, is ask, and it shall be done. Yeah. Remain in him, and he is right there with us. Whatever it is that lies ahead, God has already prepared you for it, he's equipped you for it, and he's promised to walk alongside you. So it's time to work. Stop guessing if he's talking to you. Yeah, he tapped you on the shoulder today and said, you know that thing I told you to do six months ago? It's time to work. That thing I told you to do six weeks ago? It's time to work. That thing I gave you as a task six days ago? It is time to work. That thing I whispered in your ear on Saturday afternoon? It is time to work. No more excuses. No more complacency. No more just enough is good enough. It is time to get to work. Whatever it is, the change that you want to see in this place, you be the change. Don't wait on somebody else to do it. He commissioned you for it. No, you're not too old. No, you're not too young. No, you're not too poor. No, you're not too tired. He has given you the charge, but even better news is he promised to be with you to the end of the world. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Good word. Yes. It's time. It's time. To work. To work. So today, let the work begin. Yes. And if you don't know where to begin, begin with a conversation. Yes. You know that song they used to sing? Have a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry and answer by and by. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. So wherever you are today, just have a little talk. Have a little talk. Yes. He didn't just commission us. He gave us a promise. He gave us the promise of his presence. Yes, he did. And so he's right there with you in your car, on your walk on the sidewalk, in your living room, wherever this word may be meeting you. He's there. And maybe, just maybe, somebody came along this message, you saw it posted, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I got good news for you. Come on, come on, preacher. He's still looking for disciples. Yes, he is. Those who are willing to accept him as their Lord and Savior, and then willing to go spread the good news. So if you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to pause right there where you are. You don't need a preacher in the house with you to do it. All right now. Why? Because while we may be remote, he's right there. Yes. So just open your mouth, lift your hands, and confess. Jesus, I want you to be the Savior of my life. It is yes. that simple, yes. and it's done. Yes. And maybe where you are, you felt that nudging, You've heard him telling you that he had work for you to do. Today I invite you to accept your commission. Accept your calling. There's no need to fear because he promised to be there with you along the way. And maybe during this time you've realized you've missed the fellowship of other believers and you hadn't yet committed to a church home. We invite you to Bethel. We want to wrap our arms around you virtually and walk with you and then rejoice when we can fellowship with you in person again. So if you're looking for a church home and you're hearing this message, reach out to whoever shared it with you and tell them, I want to make Bethel my home. Jump on our Facebook page. We, we got room. Give us a call. Because it's nothing like being commissioned with other believers, linking arms to get the work done. Yes. So if you're looking for a church home, we invite you to Bethel. Because yes. it's time to work, my brothers and sisters. And the work is all good. 
the work is all divine. Yeah. And we have the best leader to take us through these times. Jesus. Jesus. We praise God. Let's just have a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for those who heard the word and are responding even in this moment. We thank you for the souls that have been added to the roles of disciples who are ready to accept your teachings and then go spread the good news to others. God, I thank you for those who are listening, who have decided and are reaching out to make Bethel their home. We praise God already in advance and we thank you for the commission you've given to each of us today. Allow us to go, teach, baptize, all in your name, for your kingdom building and your glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you again for choosing to worship with Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Kansas City, Missouri, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Mark Smith. We praise God for this opportunity to worship and we offer the benediction to you that the Lord may bless you, that he may keep you, that his face may shine upon you, and that you feel his presence as you go this week and get to work. In Jesus' name, amen.